Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if, Kid Naruto was trained by Kami, the movie. Subscribe if you enjoy the video. Let's start the story. In the back streets of Kanoha's marketplace, a little boy, no older than five was running for his life. Chasing him was a mob of civilians, and a few shinobi. The boy ducked under a cart, hiding, as the mob ran past him. He looked down at the puddle of water next to him, and stared at his reflection. His spiky blonde hair and bright blue eyes, but the thing that made him mad was the six whisker marks, three on each cheek. Demon, come out, come out wherever you are. Yelled one of the civilians in the mob, I promise I'll end you quickly, after we share the pain you gave us. No. The boy yelled, as he ran out from under the cart, I'd rather face the council, than you. The boy took off down another back street, the mob gave chase to him. Boy made a turn down an alleyway, which came to a dead end. He came to stop, looking at the three-story tall wall, and looked back. The mob gained a few weapons during the chase, the sun was now just low enough to give them all a dark glow, as they approached. The boy dropped to his knees, tears began to build up in his eyes. What did I do to you? He asked. You killed everyone we loved, demon. Yelled one of the few shinobi in the crowd. But I never killed anyone. Shut up demons, and face your sins. The shinobi went through a series of hand sighing before breathing in, fire style, fireball. He blew a bowl the size of a little boy at the cryboy. An. Irony, the size happened to fit Naruto's size. The mob began to cheer, as the fire engulfed the boy, until one saw in the fire was a person, too tall to be the boy. What the hell? The man said, who the hell are you? The mob got quiet and stared as the fire died down, showing a young woman with snow white hair and bright blue eyes wearing white robes. Poor child, who attacked him? She asked quietly, as kneeled down in front of him, are you okay child? The boy looked at her smiling face and gave a small nod. Did you save me? Yes, that fire would have killed you. Duh, the demon should die, don't you agree? Yelled the shinobi that gave the attack. Demon? Wait, are you Naruto Uzumaki? She asked. Yes, I think that's my name, why? Nothing my dear child, nothing. She stood up and turned to face the mob, divine judgment. She roared. Her hair went half black, as time began to slow down around the mob, you dare threaten one of my vassals, the daughter of Kami, and think you will survive. Think again. The lady produced an orb of blackish purple light and slowly began to crush it. The mob began to gasp for air as the lady's hand came to a complete fist, crushing the orb. She looked at them before letting out a laugh, it seems that fate has plans for you. The attack was cancelled as she went back to normal. She walked over to Naruto and kneeled down in front of him. You should keep a better eye on this boy Sirotobi. The women said, behind her were the village leader, the Hokage, and behind him were six Ambu guards, the child of a demon he is, but a child of fate he has become. She looked at Naruto who was now asleep in her arms. He has a kind spirit and soul, no corruption from being a child of sin. And you are my mysterious lady? The Hokage asked. Sorry, she stood up with Naruto in her arms, my name is Kami the Divine, ruler of the court of Kami. My lord, yes. Then the Kaiubi, was it a child of mine? For a long time I thought she was looking for a mate, to think she was sealed into the boy, sigh at least she is safe. She looked down at Naruto's sleeping face. He will be a lady killer when he gets older, such a fate his parents faced, but I'll see to it that he is cared for. She walked away before the Ambu guards appeared in front of her. Drop the boy my lady. Said the captain, his hand reached for the blade strapped to his back. He went to draw it when he felt a blade pressed against his neck. The five around him went tense before reaching for their blades. You dare draw a blade to my lady said a low, harsh voice. Kami looked past the Ambu captain to see a little boy with a purple hood holding a claymore to the captain's neck. Ahamet. She said. You know this guy? The Hokage asked. Yes, he is another child of mine, Bahamut Drake, leader of the Drakes, and possible summon. Let the guard go, Bahamut. But my lady, he was going to strike you down. He said quickly, let me show these mortals true pain. Do it. It's I, as you wish my lady. He lowered the claymore from the captain's neck, Shiva and Aikshin are currently MIA for a while. Braska, yep, and it seems he calls for me. The boy took a step back, touched my lady, and I lend every last one of you. He gave a bow, turning into a fierce dragon, and took to the skies, vanishing into sealed trigram. I will take the boy Siratobi, and you know you really can't stop me. Yes, but the council will have a field day with it. Kami let out a little giggle. That simple, just tell them that Naruto was taken in by an outside force, in hope of training him to be the weapon that they desire. She shifted Naruto in her arms and reached into her pocket, pulling out a scroll. Give this to them if they ask who took him. She tossed it to the and vanished from sight. Saritobi opened the scroll and looked at it before rubbing his temple. Am Kami, just what they fear would find him. He pocketed the scroll, Ambu, took the mob to Ibiki, may their souls rest in peace. 
He vanished from the area. Ami sat on her throne, Naruto curled up in her lap. She had a smile on her face as her brother and sister came into the room. They took their respective seats on their thrones as Naruto began to stir. She looked down to see his bright blue eyes staring up at her. Where am I? Naruto asked. In the majestic court of Kami. Kami said. Damn it I died. Naruto cursed, old man isn't going to like this. Naruto you're not dead. Kami said, shocking Naruto, you are here because I want you here in hope of training you. Say again. You want me? Naruto said, pointing at himself. No shit blondie, my sister doesn't just take a mortal for nothing. Said the man in the room. Gira, show some respect for the boy. The other female in the room said, I've seen his life and it is fucked up. He has a hard time accepting that someone wants him. Besides, you were the same way at one time. You lie fate. Really Kira? I lied. Shut up you two. Father you guys argue more than a married couple and Kira you were. Kami yelled, scaring Naruto. Now Kira goes and finds the acolytes times and robes. I have a new son to train with. Eleven years have passed since Naruto has seen Kanoha. He stood at the height of six feet with shoulder length blonde hair. His once bright blue eyes were now a mixture of blue and green slits. He stood in one of the many trees that surrounded the village. He had on his acolyte robes, which were a white tank, white cargo pants, and white flats, along with a white hooded sleeveless cloak. He had bandages wrapped around his arms and hands and around his face, hiding his once famed whisker marks. So many years, I wonder if the old man even remembers me. Naruto mumbled to himself. He leapt down to the clearing below and pulled his hood over his head before pulling his goggles over his eyes. He stood and began walking towards the village gate. The gates of Kanoha were huge to him, but nothing he hadn't seen. He took caution steps towards it, from his past experience dealing with gates, something was behind them. When he was a few feet from them, they opened only to show two male ninja. From Naruto's memory and what Kami told him, he guessed they were Chunin. Identify yourself. Asked one of the pair. Naruto. Naruto responded, he pulled the hood and goggles off. What is your reason for coming here? Asked the other. Returning from training. Naruto reached into the sack on his back and pulled out a scroll with a Hokage seal. The two of them looked at the scroll before nodding and stepped aside for him to walk in. Naruto walked a few feet before one of the Chunin called him. You know Naruto, the village has been quiet with you here. He yelled. No duh, who can keep this place active and on their feet. Naruto went back to walking, pulling his hood over his head again along with his goggles. He swiftly moved through the crowd, dodging the civilians and a few shinobis when he heard his name yelled out. Ten minutes, really slow for gate guards. Naruto mumbled to himself as Anbu appeared around him. Now, let's see if they still have their skills. He pulled the hood of his cloak down and inches into his custom fighting stance. Sir, you are to surrender yourself. Yelled the masked ninja that was the captain of the squad. Sure, if you can catch me. Naruto jumped back as one ran forward. He went to deliver a punch to Naruto, who squatted down. Naruto shifted his movement around the shinobi as another one came after him. Naruto jumped to the side, roundhouse kicking him in the back of the head, driving him into the ground. He turned as the two more came, both with their ninjato drawn. He clocked his right fist back as it burst into flames and punched the first one in the mask. The sound of it cracking, followed by the sonic boom of the ninja being sent into his partner, adding on more force as they were sent down the market street road into a vendor's cart. Naruto stood up, the cloak flapping in the wind, he looked around, noticing the civilian staring at him. Then the sound of a katana being drawn and the shift in the wind caused Naruto to turn to be pinned down by the Anbu captain with a cat-shaped mask. Niko-chan, why so rough? Naruto mumbled. Shut up and surrender. Niko said. Fine. Naruto answered. He looked up to see the top of the tower from his view he was in. He reached into his cloak pocket, causing Niko to get tense, and pulled out a small orb. Looking into it, he saw the third Hokage reading a certain orange book. Old man really needs to think where he reads that. Naruto said, as he appeared in front of the doors to the Hokage office. He dusts himself off before asking the lady in front of him something. Excuse me ma'am, but is the Hokage in? The lady sitting in front of the doors looked up at Naruto. Yes, I'll buzz you in. She said softly. The door to the office opened showing a very old and tired man. Who is this? He asked. But old man, surely you remember me? Naruto said, sounding shocked. The Hokage looked at Naruto for a few seconds before dropping his pipe from out his mouth. Nar Naruto is that really you? No, I'm the damn Yandame old man. Naruto yelled, of course it's me. Wait, you know who Yandame is? Well blonde hair and blue eyes is really rare in the village, besides Inoichi, who if I was my father, would have not placed me in a damn orphanage. So that left Yandame, but then the matter of who my mother is. Naruto, come into my office. 
Hitomi please cancel all appointments and meetings I may have until I am finished with Naruto here. Yes lord. Hitomi said as she went back to work. Naruto walked into the Hokage chambers and took a seat on the couch as the Hokage took him behind his desk. Naruto I am happy you are back, but since you left, the council hasn't been happy with everything. Saratobi said as Naruto nodded. Yeah, I know. Fate's been keeping an eye on you. Naruto said, now, how are we going to do this? The what? I'm a shinobi now, so Jen and team or are you going to send me to the fields now? Oh well I have been thinking about that for the last 11 years. Saratobi said as he pulled out a file. Stamped across it was Naruto's name along with several S rank seals. This is your current file, it has everything on you until 11 years ago. I want you to fill it, but if you don't have to. This will only make the council hater love you. Naruto let out a groan as he stood up. I hate filing things. This is all Kami made me do when I wasn't learning anything. Naruto picked up the file and looked it over. Whoa this needs a big update, hair, still blonde Naruto began fixing the outdated information, eye color, bluish green mixlets, height, about 6 foot, 6 foot 1, weight, 189 pounds. Still have the exotic whiskers, shinobi rank well, I'll have you fill that out. Bloodline. Bloodline. Naruto looked up at the Saratobi ready for more paperwork and a bigger headache. No, why Naruto? Bloodline, fire release, wind release, lightning release, and immortality. Naruto said with a smile, along with that everything should be up to date. Good, I decided to test your skills. Saratobi said, you will meet me here at the end of the week. Then we will head to a secure training area to test you in, ninjutsu, jinjutsu, tojutsu, and any other skills you have. Naruto began to laugh. I want a girl with a lot of stamina, because the skills I have will leave her restless and unable to walk. Saratobi launched out of his chair with a nosebleed as Naruto walked over and picked up the orange book in the top drawer. Maybe page 146 will be a good place to start. Naruto mumbled as he flipped through the book. The end of the week came as Naruto walked into the chamber. He looked up to see a blonde-haired girl standing in front of the desk. She was wearing the standard chunin vest over an orange mini shirt, she had on green cargo shorts that hung loose off her, black high-top shinobi sandals, and black fingerless gloves. She turned around to the sound of the door opening and looked at Naruto. That's when Naruto noticed her eye, light green, almost transparent with swirls. You actually took what I said seriously. Naruto said, I was kidding, Kami let alone Tifa would kill me if I did any of those things. Saratobi let out a groan. Naruto this here is Tasu Torm, heiress to the Torm clan. Saratobi said she was here turning in her reports on the clan. You may leave Tasu. Tasu bowed before walking out the room. An I'll bed here? Naruto asked as took a seat on the couch, when did she and her clan come here? Not that long ago, her clan came about a year after you left, they just joined a year ago. Saratobi answered, she was the first of her clan to have chakra and be able to wield it. She would be nice to have on a team. Naruto said as he stood up, so let's get this test done, shall we? The Hokage nodded as he placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder. They shunshin out of the office, appearing clear that was training ground zero, commonly known as the Hokage pit. Naruto looked around, noticing only three people were standing under a tree and roughly about 30 Anbu ninjas scattered around. He then looked over to see the three old people that made up the Hokage's advisors. I see that you took precautions. Naruto said with a smirk. Well I didn't. They said, they did. He pointed to the advisors, it seems the stunt you did when you arrived sparked a few old memories. Let them think what they want. Naruto pulled off his white cloak and walked towards the center of the field, ninjutsu, you're up. Naruto yelled as a man with grey gravity defined hair and mask stood up and walked over to him. Hello. He said with eye smiles, my name is Hada Kakashi, I will be testing your ninjutsu skills. Sure. Just don't get mad when you lose. Naruto said. Kakashi just nodded as he walked back a few paces. They both dropped into a fighting stance. Kakashi went first as he went through a few hand signs. I'll give you a simple low-level fire attack to start off. Kakashi said as he finished, fire style, fireball he sent a small car-sized fireball at Naruto. Naruto just smirked and swatted the ball away with his right hand, shooting out his left as he released small fireballs. Kakashi jumped back as the balls of fire hit the ground. What shocked everyone was the mini-explosion that happened when they hit. Shit. Yelled Kakashi as he landed on his feet, earth style, earth spike. He said as she slammed the palms of his hands on the ground. Spikes of earth shot up out of the ground, traveling towards Naruto. Naruto let out a laugh as he stuck his hand in his pockets as he began dodging the spikes. Everyone was shocked at his speed as he dodged the spike, making some of the crash into each other. Lightning style, lightning surge Kakashi slammed his hand to the ground, causing a surge of lightning through the ground. Hot ride to dodge that. 
Kakashi smirked as Naruto was stricken. Naruto began to spaz as the lightning flowed through him, he curled up in the air, screaming before laughing as he opened up, releasing a wave of lightning. Kakashi took the hit, sending him back against a tree. Naruto began going through hand signs when he heard Kakashi say something. I give. Kakashi yelled. Naruto stopped as smirked. He's at low, maybe mid jonin with ninjutsu. They nodded as Naruto fell to a lotus position. I say different, but since you're the one testing. Naruto let out a sigh as he lay back against the ground, Jinjutsu if you don't mind I'll fight you last. He heard a female say yes as he jumped to his feet. A sound rang out that made everyone look at Naruto. What? He asked as the sound hit his ears, oh for the love Kami. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a black flip phone, technology from the god realms. Hello? Naruto Uzumaki? Said a female voice. Sai yes Tifa. Naruto said. Have you heard from Cloud? No, I thought he was with Vincent. Why? He disappeared and no one can find him. Naruto let out a growl as he began crushing the phone. If when I get the time, I'll come to Midgar and look for his blonde ass. Then I'm going to drag it back. Thank no. Tifa hung up as Naruto slipped the phone into his pocket. The Jutsu, get ready to go all out because I really want to kill a certain blonde right now. Naruto said as a man in a green spandex jumpsuit appeared in front of him. The sexy green beast of Konoha, guy is here. He said as Naruto punched him in the face. Guy bounced off the ground and did a backflip and landed on his feet. My youthful opponent packs a punch. Naruto appeared on his right side and delivered a back kick to Guy's back, forcing him to the ground. This went on for a few minutes until Naruto called it quits. Why my youthful opponent? Guy asked. Because, if I continued, you would be hospitalized for the next month. My strength increases with my anger or something like that. Naruto walked away as pulled off the tank top he wore, showing the crowd the multiple seals and tattoos. In Jutsu if you don't mind, I like to continue after we have a break. The person he was talking to was Kurinai as she stepped over to him and nodded. Naruto took a seat on the grass as he pulled out the blue orb from his pocket. He looked into it to see Tasu sitting in a tree looking at a training ground. He looked closer to see that she was staring at him. And Tifa says girls can't be perverts. Naruto said as he stood up. Tasu you can come out now your hiding spot has been spoiled. Everyone turned to and looked at Naruto as the tree overhead began to rustle. Out came Tasu, landing in a crouch. Ramu Tasu. Hello Tasu, Naruto said in a tongue that no one could understand. We all bed. You speak all bed, Tasu responded. Her hands went behind her back, gripping the handles of her two swords. Oak, yes, I learned it from a friend. Naruto answered, he reached up to the top of the bandages and loosened them, and he inched into his fighting stance and pulled out a Kayaketsu Shoujidati stuck his hand through the ring and gripped the chain link. Tasu let out a growl as she pulled out her two swords. Home, you smell of home and desert. She growled. Before anyone could blink, she charged, Ui Hudsoul myth. You will not disrespect my clan. She roared as she lunged at Naruto, who in turn used the chain link to block. Naruto jumped back, swung the chain around, wrapping it around the blade of one of her swords. Is that so? Naruto said in a cold voice, how does smelling like a desert and home have to do with disrespecting your clan? Naruto gave a soft yank on the chain, pulling it out of her hands, divine style Jinjutsu, Destiny Shores. Naruto mumbled as he vanished from her view. She looked around, seeing water upon water, she was standing on a beach with a small treehouse-like town. Naruto sat next to the panting hard as he gripped his right shoulder. He looked at Tasu, looked around, lost within his, and let out a laugh. So I still feel like going against me. He asked Kurinai who in turn said no, good I feel tired now. Naruto said as he passed out. Lord Hokage I give him level skills, along with Tejutsu. Kakashi said as Tasu broke out of the and looked up at Siratobi. Tell him to meet me at training ground 6 at the end of next week for practice. She said as she left via wind shunshin. Naruto was lying on his back when he woke up in Kanoha's hospital. He let out a groan as he sat up in the bed. He observed the surroundings carefully, noticing a red fur fox sitting in on the two chairs in the room. Sitting in the other one was Siratobi holding a file in his hands. Naruto, glad you're awake. He said softly, the doctors were having some problems trying to diagnose what you have. Huh? Naruto said softly as he stared at the red fox. The blackish gray blots on your arm? Siratobi said, pointing to Naruto's arm, they thought it was contiguous, but now they're thinking it has to do with the training Kami gave you, which I'm still waiting to hear about. Naruto let out a sigh as turned his gaze to the Hokage. Old man, was the fox here when you came and Naruto asked. Yes it was staring at you, as if you were prey. It even snapped at the doctors that were checking on you. Siratobi answered, and that was two days ago. Now it just sits in the chair. 
Naruto stared at the fox a little longer before gulping down his saliva. The fox shifted into a low crotch, as if it was waiting to pounce on the poor blonde. Old man, you might want to be outside in a few minutes to calm down your anbu. Why? Just do it. Naruto said, as he brought his hands up to defend himself. The fox pounced onto the bed, while in the air, it began to shift forms, as a hand extended out, grabbing Naruto's neck. Naruto was pinned up against a hospital wall, by a fiery red-haired woman, in a blood-red battle dress with nine crimson-colored tails wiping around behind her. You left me behind. She yelled at Naruto, who was cowering in fear, how could you? Ayu chan let me go. Naruto pleaded, as he pried her hands from around his neck. You were told to wait for me before re-entering the veil. Kami made that clear to you. She loosens her grip letting Naruto fall to his feet. Ayu chan I left for a reason. And what might that be kid? A voice said. Sirotobi turned his head to see Kami standing against the doorframe. I wanted to get familiar with the place before I began the trails. Naruto answered. Okay, can somebody please tell me what's going on? Sirotobi asked. Naruto let out a sigh as he took his seat on the bed. I better yet, Kaiyu-chan and I are mated for life. Kaiyu-chan is the Kaiyuubi, head of the Kitsunes. Wait, that's why you asked me about the Anbu? Naruto nodded, boy, you are going to kill me one of these days. So what is this trail Kami spoke about? The trail of honor and courage. Kami said, as she walked into the room, the first of four trails that Naruto has to take to become an acolyte. A friend of mine is going to give you the test, look for her. Kami snapped her fingers, opening a portal back to her court, Kaiubi come, you are still on probation. Kaiubi gave Naruto a kiss on the cheek before jumping to Kami's side. They both walked through the portal, as Naruto let out a sigh. Hasu wants to see you later today. Sirotobi said, so 16, and already have a wife. He walked out of the room. Naruto let out a groan, as he plopped his head down the pillow. He reached into his coat pocket and pulled out his orb looking into it. Naruto walked into a forest clearing, looking for Tasu to find out what she wanted. When he was dead center, Tasu fell out of the trees landing in front of him. She gave him a glare before clearing her throat making Naruto look at her. What do you want? Naruto asked, as Tasu looked at him in confusion. It is a gift from Yevon. She said in choppy Japanese, told me that you are to be an acolyte by the test. Oh you are the person I am to see about the test. As he gave her a smile. Yes. Well, there will be the test for your honor and courage, by me, she said, placing her hands on the two ninjados. Naruto stepped back and comically shook his head fast before smiling broadly and looking at Tasu. When do we start? I gotta kick your ass first right? He said. Tasu smirked, my ass. Puo, ui naku hapakuna is tu hafedrui. Ik du lin xia du huff. Boy, you're gonna be sore when I'm done with you. As to your question now. She said an owl bed before both beings disappeared in a flash of light. Unknown location. Tasu and Naruto. Naruto and Tasu arrived, and Naruto immediately began to take in his surroundings. They were on a large white tiled arena platform that was easily a mile wide. Naruto turned back to Tasu who smirked, famous do so booknut. Irana, ELHDN. Welcome to my personal playground boy. Here, I control everything. She said. Naruto raised an eyebrow, how am I supposed to beat you if you control everything? He asked. Asu chuckled, nobody ever said the test was to beat me. No, the test is set by me, and I don't feel like telling you what you want to do to pass. She started with her arms crossed. Naruto scowled at this, but thought for a moment before asking, okay then, what exactly will we be doing here? He asked, deciding not to run his mouth and actually use his brain. Asu smirked, there's the Naruto I was looking for. Think before you speak or act. She said. She started to pace back and forth in front of Naruto. Let me explain the rules and stipulations to this test. First off, you're going to be fighting me until I tell you to stop. Secondly, tojutsu are weapons only, no throw weapons, however can eyes will be allowed to block my ninjados if I use them. The last and most important rule, I have enabled you to reach the full potential your mind holds. She said, gaining a confused look from her blonde-haired opponent. Full potential my mind holds. What the heck does that mean? Naruto asked, thoroughly confused. She smirked again, I'll only give you a hint. Mind is more important here than the body. He said. Naruto was still confused, but decided to just nod and drop into his fighting stance. Good, you're not wasting any time. Neither will I. She started before she blurred forward and slammed into Naruto's defenses like a ball. Naruto was hard pressed to defend against the blonde juggernaut and he quickly decided that evading the Albed's attacks was the best course of action. He was able to somewhat stall Tasu by doing this, but he couldn't hit the woman to save his life. Unfortunately, his life was on the line, and he needed to find a way around the man's insane speed and style, or he would be in big trouble. 
Naruto had spent the past five minutes trying to not get creamed by Tasu. Tasu, on the other hand, was getting bored and kept trying to get Naruto to step it up a notch. She threw another punch at Naruto and knocked him back before sighing in disappointment. What a waste. To think you're supposed to be an acolyte. He asked. She put a finger to her chin, maybe I should offer to end Kami's disappointment and kill you. She said. Naruto immediately rushed forward and tried to strike the owl bed. Tasu easily redirected and avoided all of Naruto's strikes. Naruto growled and redoubled his efforts, going slightly faster. Tasu smirked seeing this, come on, stop trying to hit me, and hit me. He half yelled at Naruto. Tasu suddenly found himself on the wrong end of a very fast and vicious assault from the once Kyuubi Jinchuriki and ended up getting struck in the chest and flying back about 10 feet. Naruto stared in shock at his fist. I'm I'm not that strong. Wait a minute. She said to reach the full potential my mind holds and mind over body. Let's test it. He thought before he suddenly felt his foot become 10 times heavier than the rest of his body. Tasu smirked and said, enough of the kitty's games. It's time to step up or die. Naruto watched as Tasu disappeared and a cloud of dust appeared around him in a circle. Suddenly, everyone watched as a line of destruction raged towards Naruto. It was Tasu running so fast he busted up the arena. Naruto smirked devilishly and Tasu noticed Naruto's muscles expand and then shrink back down several times. Naruto swiftly threw a punch forward and everyone watched in anticipation as his fist met with Tasu and a crater appeared around the two combatants. Tasu smirked, seems you figured it out. Let's see if you can keep up. She said before disappearing again. Naruto smirked right back, oh. It's on. He roared as he too disappeared. The two fighters bounced off each other, only stopping to regain their footing. Naruto drew back his fist to go in for another punch when Tasu spoke. You pass. She said softly, your first step to becoming an acolyte is done, now only three more to go. Hey good. Who's the next one? Naruto asked as he tried to catch his breath. I don't know. Tasu said as she vanished with Naruto. Back in the training ground, Naruto got a quick look at his surroundings before seeing Tasu become transparent, a firefly-like particle floating around her. He ran over to her as she gave him a kind smile. What happened to you? Naruto asked. I'm returning to the far plane to be one with a dream. Tasu answered, I was never one with the clan. I was sent to test you, then I am to return to my people of Spear. She reached into her jacket pocket and pulled out a scroll, this is what you might want to look over if you have any chance of becoming an acolyte. Naruto took the scroll as she faded out. He looked at the spot she stood at and pocketed the scroll as an Anbu guard appeared behind him. Okage would like to see you, Uzumaki-san. It said giving Naruto a bow. Okay, I will see him Niko-chan. Naruto turned and walked out of the clearing as the Anbu guard left in a leaf shunshin. Naruto sat inside the Hokage office staring at the ground as Siratobi talked with his advisors. He turned to see Naruto looking down. He cleared his throat and motioned for his advisors to take their seats. Naruto, do you know why you are here? Siratobi asked as Naruto looked up at him. That's when Siratobi first noticed the look in Naruto's eyes, the pain and sorrow he faced. What's wrong? When I finally have a good time, make a close friend, they are taken away, forced to leave me. Or I am taken away. Naruto said, but yes, I do know why I am here. You're going to give me my rank. Oh good. Siratobi gave Naruto a kind smile, as called his secretary in, may, you please bring Anko Midarashi here. Right away sir. He said, as he walked out. Siratobi, why do you need her here? Asked Kaharu. She is needed in this meeting, as well. Siratobi responded, as he pulled up Naruto's file, Naruto we Kaharu and Hamura both looked at Siratobi, as Danzo glared at Naruto, well mostly I decided to give you the rank, as a jonin, but due to some unwelcoming people, I am forced to give you a partner to watch over your actions. As if on cue, Anko Midarashi barged into the room. What do you three old people say I did this time? Anko yelled, because if it has anything to do with the poor jonin I almost killed, let me tell you one thing. He walked in front of my kunai. Anko, no, it's not that. Saratobi said, calming the purple-haired ninja down, and I have a report from Ibiki that proves your innocence. Now the reason I called you here is to give you a full rank. Anko jumped up, screaming with joy, but you will be partnered with Uzumaki here. Anko calmed down and looked at Naruto who was staring at her. This kid is a she asked, squatting down in front of Naruto, so you're the I've been here so much about from Kurinai-chan. You seem a little bit younger than she described you. Yeah, but I am immortal, so I know any dangerous moves that I can use my Kaiketsu Shoujo with. Naruto asked, as the sickle and chain weapon appeared in his hands, how about you teach me that snake hand move of yours? Anko's eyes widened at what Naruto asked, along with those taijutsu skills of yours. 
The heavy stance combined with my skills with this. Lord Hokage, Anko, asked with a smirk, I'll take him. She grabbed Naruto by his collar and walked out of the tower. What the four old timers didn't know was that this team would come back to bite them in the ass later. Two months later. Cobra to Fox, do you copy? Anko said into her radio as she ran across the roofs of the village. Cobra, this is a fox, Naruto answered over the radio, target is heading towards the market district and he's taken a hostage. Copy that. I'm 10 minutes from there. Don't worry Anko-chan, I promise I will leave you something to kill. Naruto said as he put his hand into a cross, multi-shadow clone jutsu. 10 Naruto's puffed behind him. He jumped up into the air, blocking out the sun as the civilians looked up, shadow chain hand. A dozen sickles and chains came raining down on top of them. Aisa Fujioka, a jonin rank nukenin from Cloud in the Bingo Book, looked up along with the civilian to be pinned down by the chains. His hostage, a brown-haired girl, rolled out of his grip and ran down an alleyway as Naruto landed. Aisa Fujioka, B rank nukenin. Naruto said as he walked closer to Aisa, who was trying to get up and out of the chains. Ah hey, that's me, why? Aisa asked. Naruto gave a snap, making the chains vanish. Isao stood up and pulled out a warhammer. He walked up to Naruto, standing a few inches taller than Naruto. Puny boy ninja wants to fight. Puny boy ninja wants to end your life. Naruto looked up at him, I am S rank ninja of the leaf, I almost had a flea on side order on me in the bingo book. Still want to fight. And no shit. Isao said as he brought his warhammer down to the ground with a bang. The spot that Naruto once stood at was a crater, Naruto a few feet from the edge. Damn, I would have been more dead than that old pervert. Naruto said. He reached behind his back and pulled out two sets of Kaiketsu Shouj, the sickle part fell to the ground with a pile of chains on top of them. He took a step and gave the chain a whip, giving the civilians a warning to back away. That I haven't fought a guy who used those weapons since I was a chunin. He lifted the hammer up, but those want to protect you from me. He ran forward, swing his hammer to the right. Naruto dodged to the left, swinging his chain across Aisao's torso. They ripped the fabric of his shirt, twin streams of blood were seen from the cut, as Isa let out a laugh, ha, ha, ha that was pathetic. He pulled his arm back, bringing the hammer speed back to his left bent backwards, watching the hammer soar above him. Naruto rolled backwards to his feet, pulling the chains back, as Isa jumped back. Earth style, dragon bullet Isa yelled, as a dragon head shot up out of the ground. It opened its mouth and unleashed a barrage of earth bullets at Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened as a wall of wind formed around him. When the wall of wind died down, Naruto saw the destruction of the two attacks. He lifted his right arm chain with a snap. The attack was so fast that Isao didn't know the sickle part of the weapon was embedded into the left side of his torso until the left-handed chain pierced his skin above his heart. The two chain weapons were in an X shape as Naruto ran forwards towards the Nukenin. But you're going to attack me head on. Isao roared as Naruto's right foot connected with his stomach. Naruto ran over his shoulder, landing behind him as he gave an evil grin. Any last words? Naruto asked. No none. May Kami have mercy upon your soul. Narchua mumbled as he pulled. The sickle went across each other, decapitating Isao's head from his shoulders. The body fell to its knees as the head landed a few feet away from it. The back of Naruto's white clock was caked in blood as Anko appeared into the market district. I want to fight him as well. Anko said with a pout as Naruto stood up, pulling his clock off. He used an air ank in a crowded area. Naruto mumbled. Crowded okay. Anko walked over to the head and sealed it within a scroll, she turned to face Naruto. Let's go and get the bounty on this guy. Alright. Naruto leapt to the roof, Anko following behind him. To what Naruto didn't notice was a raven duck butt shaped hair boy watching his fight from the shadows. I want him to teach me his skills. Naruto lay on his back, his right arm over his head, as he stared at the ceiling of his shared apartment with Anko. He was reminiscing about what he was asked to do for the council and the punishment if he declined. Mother, Naruto whispered, what should I do? He reached up, grasping the air as his arm fell down to his side. Flashback no. Naruto stood in front of the council with Anko behind him. He looked each of them in the eye before opening his mouth. Okay, what the hell do you want? He yelled. Shut you demon. Barked one of the civilian council members, you will keep your demon trap hut and listen. Where is Suratobi senpai? Naruto asked, glaring at the council member. He is not needed with this problem. Danzo spoke, causing Naruto glare to shift to him. Really, calling one of them out to speak with them? Anko asked, has nothing to do with him. The Hokage should be here, along with the clan and Shinobi part of the council. Shut the fuck up you snake whore. Yelled a red hair council member, causing the rest to laugh. Anko dropped her head as Naruto stuck his hand in his pockets. So then, almighty council. Naruto began, tell me what you want. We told you to shut up and listen the redhead yelled. 
Baru Hirano, age 39, current member of the Civilian Council, married to Sakri Hirano, and has a daughter in the academy named Sakura Wright. Naruto asked. Yes, how did you know that? Haru asked. I shinobi should always know the people he is with. Naruto answered, so tell me why I am here. Fine. Haru said he called an Anbu member, please retrieve Sasuke Chiha for us. The Anbu left, as he looked at Naruto. Hamura, Kaharu, and Danzo's faces grew a smile, as Sasuke walked in. Hamura cleared his throat, and spoke. Mr. Uzumaki, you are to teach and train Ichiha Sasuke here in your fighting style. He said, as Naruto began to laugh, what's funny? You want me to teach a 16-year-old, better yet Naruto fell to his knees laughing. Stop laughing at you, demon. Haru yelled. Sorry he is not even a demigod let alone a full god. Naruto stopped laughing, as he stood up looking serious, he will die before he can even lift the chains up. My style is handed down to each god in Kami's court. So no. You have to teach him or we will strip you of your rank and place you in the academy with people your age. Harry yelled, as the council agreed. Fine. Naruto turned to face Sasuke who was glaring at him, wipe that stare off your face and tell me why you want to know. Sasuke doesn't have to tell anything to the demon. Tell me or I'll find out why. How is that? Sasuke asked as Naruto placed his hand against Sasuke's forehead. Inoichi Yamanaka was kind enough to teach me one of his family jutsus. Sasuke's eyes widened, so tell me. I want to avenge my clan by killing my brother. Sasuke yelled as Naruto let out a little laugh. Vengeance is not the way of the gods or my fighting style. Naruto walked past Sasuke towards the door. Come Anko, I will not teach this spoiled brat how to fight. Flashback no Jutsu Kai. I think, three days later, and the council is still stunned at what I said. Naruto sat up in the darkness of his room, he rubbed his eyes as the door to his room opened. Bed up Gaki, the Hokage got a mission for us. Anko yelled as she stood in the doorway. Naruto looked at her and scratched his head. What's the mission this time? I don't know, but the scroll says it's important. Okay. Naruto threw sheets off him and crawled out of the bed. Naruto and Anko walked up the spiral staircase towards the Hokage's office. Anko in her ordinary outfit, but Naruto had a black version of his, the hood down, and goggles around his neck. They walked up to the desk beside the Hokage doors and let out a sigh as the sun crept into the windows. Naruto opened the door, allowing Anko to walk in. They came in front of the desk and stood at attention. Jonin Uzumaki and Jonin Mitarashi reporting in. Naruto shouted, scaring the old man behind the desk. Saratobi let out a sigh as pushed the stack of paperwork aside. Naruto and Anko, Saratobi mumbled, I have two jobs for you. And out of the village mission. Naruto asked. No you need a third person for that. Anko, you are to report to Ibiki for your job with the intelligence division. Naruto sigh you are to replace Chunin for me. It's just for the day though. Who am I replacing and what am I doing? Baruka Yamino, academy teacher. The temperature in the room dropped several degrees, Naruto's eyes iced over as electric sparks emitted and began to dance around his fist. I. Will. Not. Teach. A. Bunch. Of. Brats. Naruto yelled, I told the council that a few weeks ago. The council? Saratobi asked. You didn't know? Anko said with a smirk on her face, I'll be right back. Don't start anything until I'm back with my camera. Anko puffed out of the room as the Hokage gave a snap. Three Anbu guards appeared in front of him. Please go and fetch my advisors. You are allowed to drag them from their beds if you have to. The Anbu nodded and Shunshin out of the room. Naruto you are dismissed, please refrain from killing any of the students. Naruto let out scoff as he snapped his fingers, opening up a portal. I can't give you any promises old man. Naruto walked though leaving the Hokage office. Naruto appeared in an empty classroom, it was an hour before the class was crowded with students. Naruto leaned against a desk, pulling his hood, goggles, and wrapping it around his neck. He let out a sigh, crossing his arms thinking. Pasu scroll said that knowledge is power, and the ability to use that knowledge is even greater power. Naruto thought, as the front door to the academy opened, had time for a little fun. Naruto did a few hand signs, casting the room in a way making Naruto disappear from sight upon entry, time to sit back and decide who will actually pass three tests, written, taijutsu with an obstacle course, and the ninjutsu test. 30 students, 6 hours I am getting a raise after this. The classroom door opened, Naruto snapped his head towards it, watching the student fill in. The first one was a boy with black hair pulled up in a high knot in the shape of a pineapple. He took a seat in the top right row and placed his head down on the table, falling asleep. The next one was another male with wild brown hair and slit eyes. He had red triangle fangs on his cheeks and a white puppy on his head. He took a seat two rows down from the first. The next was a female with short bluish purple hair. She took a seat in the front row. 
Nara, Inuzuka, and Hayuga. This must be the clan class I heard so much about in the past few months. After a few minutes, the room began to fill with students, ranging from civilians to the clans. Naruto glanced around the room, looking at the many students taking a seat or talking amongst themselves. He spotted the Nara kid looking at him and gave a smile before spotting a certain emo raven hair boy glaring at him. Time to start I guess. 28 students. Two are missing. Naruto let out a sigh, standing up, alright take a seat, and shut up. Naruto yelled as his gen jutsu was cancelled, scaring most of the students. Your test has already been passed out, you have an hour to finish the written part. He looked at everyone as the Inuzuka boy perked up in his seat. Hit the deck. He yelled ducking underneath his desk. The door to the classroom opened up, showing two girls fighting their way in. I was here for the first Eno pig. Yelled the pink hair girl as she pushed the one next to her. In your dream's forehead. Eno said, your giant forehead gave you a head start. Shut pig, Sasuke-kun is going to let me sit next to him like he always h h h h. The pink haired girl screams as she is pulled by her feet into the air. Eno followed close behind her. You both lost 10 minutes from your test for disrupting my class. Inuzuka gets from underneath your desk and finishes up your test. Nara, lift up your head and do yours. Ichiha, spot blaring at me and do you test before I gouge your eyes out. Naruto barked. You can't do this. I'm the daughter of a council member, I can have your rank stripped from you. The pink haired girl screamed. Sakura shut up. Ino mumbled as Naruto turned to face them. 20 minutes, Ms. Haruno. Let me go this instant. 30, you want to fail at only the part you can actually pass. Civilian. The room got quiet and Sakura's eyes widened. What do you mean? Sakura Haruno, age 16, civilian with a big head. Specialize in gen jutsu. Has split personality and lacks the skills to become a full kanoichi. I know what I mean. Ms. Yamanaka, you can go and take your test. He let Ino go, catching her as she fell, Ms. Haruno, good luck. He turned and went over to the front of the desk, taking a seat. The full hour went by as Naruto went around collecting the test. Sakura, due to lack of time, still managed to finish. He came around to the front and set the stack on the desk. He crossed his arms and looked at the students in front of him. Introductions are needed. I will take it. The class majority nodded, fine. Uzumaki Naruto, Jonin of Kanahagakur no Sato. 16, and Kami's personal life. I specialize in ninjutsu and kusurigama jutsu. I have some skills in kinjutsu, but I prefer my children instead. He let out a sigh looking out the window, took a 10 minute break, and met me outside. He swiftly moved to the door and gave them a smirk before walking out. Naruto sat up in the courtyard tree looking down at the multiple students taking a break. He shifted his glance towards the blonde haired beauty that he caught earlier in the day. Platinum blonde, almost silk like hair. Endless sky length blue orbs. Naruto thought, as he glanced at her, a figure that can make most goddess cry, God's chase. She will make the perfect mate and goddess for the elemental nations. He stood up, shrugging his black cloak off as he jumped down into the clearing. Alright, line up, your next test is this simple obstacle course. Naruto gestured to the series of jumps, ropes, and wooden platforms behind him, first up is, Aburam, Shino. A boy walked up wearing a high collar coat and black tinted glasses, you may begin. Shino took a few steps before breaking into a run as he jumped onto the first plank. 2.23.79, sec, 2.26.13 sec, and 25.01.02 sec. The three top scores of the class. Inuzuka Kiba, Aburam Shino, and Ichiha Sasuke. Naruto thought as he watched a civilian boy crash into the small pond below the tripwire that was set up, you're done lay in. Naruto barked as he looked down at his pocket watch, 3 minutes, 54 seconds, and 59 milliseconds. You have the slowest time in the class. We're done here, get in the classroom. Naruto began to administer the next part of the test when a white-haired walked in. Naruto turned to face him, giving him a clean stare. Hey, sorry, I kinda overslept in class. He looked at Naruto and smiled, you must be Aruka's sub in Mizuki. The second teacher for this class. You are. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto mumbled shifting his stare to the class. This is your last test. I know that most of you wanted to demonstrate your fighting skills, but I'm on short notice, so we're skipping it, unless Mizuki wants to do it later. Sure, so what are we doing? Their ninjutsu test. Oh a basic clone, substitution, and hinge. Okay, we start at the bottom of the list with Yamanaka, Ino. Mizuki said, as Ino stood up and let out a sigh. Both walked into the back room, leaving Naruto alone with the class. Naruto sat on top of the desk in the classroom, looking at the students, as Mizuki came back into the classroom with Sasuke smirking. Naruto shook his head no, shifting his gaze to the window. Sakura noticed this and began to stare at the window, as well. Uzumaki-sama, what are you looking at? 
Sakura asked. Wait for it. He whispered. Why? Sakura asked. Her eyes widened as a black draped figure crashed into the window. The draped figure shifted, rolling out as Anko. She turned as faced Naruto, sticking a dango into her mouth. Aki, we got a bastard to hunt. Anko said with a smirk as Naruto let out a laugh. And who might this be? An ex-Anbu officer by the name of Nori Kano. Naruto gave everyone a smile and walked over to the window seal, pulling one leg over, well then let's go. Naruto was tailing Anko across the roofs of houses in Konoha and businesses. He looked around noticing that the housing got old and more makeshift. The people walking around were shabby looking, tired and more homeless. He jumped to Anko's side pulling his hood down. Where are we? Naruto asked. The outer rim. Anko mumbled, home to nearly 90% of Konoha civilians and criminals. Here, you either live by the rules or die by them. Why is it so ransacked? Konoha is made up of 25 districts. One district makes up the whole Hokage estate, monument and tower. Four make up the noble compounds and the academy. Those five make up the inner inner rim, the next are five districts that belong to the merchants, traders, the hundreds of guilds, and the civilian houses for those who seat upon the council. That makes up the outer inner rim. Those two rims make up the inner rim. The middle rim has five more districts that belong just to the civilians and the civilian guard corps. Now the outer rim has ten, underdeveloped, undermanaged, and undersupplied distributions called the ten ghettos. Due to being the first to be destroyed in a war, the civilian council decides not to send aid to them, but send an unlimited supply of money to fund their projects in the middle rim. If you want to meet a group of people who can make perfect shinobi and will die for the village, here. Anko jumped down into a dirty street littered with trash and sleeping people, Naruto not far behind her, his house is around here somewhere. You still didn't answer the question. He said, as they began to walk down what looked like a street. Would you spend money rebuilding homes and shelter for a place that will be destroyed over and over again? No, but a civilian makes the choices for anything outside the inner rim. If a clan takes an interest, it falls out of the civilian's control, but who would? Naruto stayed quiet as he looked around. Any good intel on the target? He is a water user, a master of, and has most of the outer rim memorized, meaning he is going to be a bitch to capture. Hells yeah. Anko turned around a corner into a dead end. She looked around carefully at the dark infested windows for the target he chose here for a reason of some sort. We're on his home turf. The outer rim was made like a maze right. Naruto asked, he could lose his followers here and kill them without any trouble. Yeah, but it doesn't explain why we were hunting him. Well, what did the guy say? Naruto leaned against and shot out a vendor cart. That Nori was smuggling and I went in using his house as the base. He was just there to make sure that nothing bad happens to them. What did the Tsuchikage have to say about this? Naruto jokes. Nothing is there rogue. Ah oh, now it all makes sense. Naruto stood up and pointed to the second floor building. He's in there. Why would he? The second window curtain keeps moving as if someone was watching us. Naruto reached into his back pocket and pulled out his trusty orb. Let's see what's inside. He gazed into it. Naruto searched around a cluttered hallway up to a door. He looked to his right then to his left before phasing through the door into the next room. Nori stood over a desk, mumbling words, as he tossed papers aside. He's in there, looking for something, but in there. Aki, you know with that orb of yours, you can replace the whole tracking division. Anko walked up to the door, kicking it in, as Naruto ran past her, following behind him. They both came into the hall that Naruto was in. Anko pulled out a set of kunais, preparing for a fight, as Naruto walked down the hall. He came up to the door, set his foot against the wood, and looked back to Anko, who gave him a nod. Naruto kicked the door down, scaring the guy that stood behind it as Anko rushed in. Nori turned around, grabbing his ninjato that was next to the desk. Nori was old looking, his brown hair graying out as he wore his Anbu armor without the padding and mask. Did I take it that the loser got captured? Nori said with a toothy grin, I knew he couldn't hold his tongue. Nori Kano, ex Anbu agent. Naruto said as Nori nodded, wanted for aiding Rujnin into Konoha. Nori began to laugh as Naruto raised a brow. What's funny? You. You think that I care for what I did. Naruto shrugged his shoulders as Nori went on, I know what I did and I hope that what I did will aid the people of the ten ghettos. Anko let out a scoff as she walked up to him. You and every other loser here. Anko said, the civilian council won't help out here. I know, that's why me and my Iwa friends are going to start a civil war here, take over the council and force the Hokage to help. You want to start a civil war. Naruto yelled, deep down inside, Naruto hated war, as he was forced to witness them, fight in them, and forced to choose sides in Kami's court. A war will kill innocent people, and make more people homeless, and on the street, what is the purpose of the fight? Anko was in shock over Naruto's sudden outburst. 
Pest sacrifices must be made for the greater good. All must know what the true people of Konoha lived like. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he glared at him. Sacrifices, you are talking about innocent people, lives. Mothers, fathers, children. Families. Why do you care, you're a shinobi, killing people is part of your job. Naruto closed his eyes, letting out a deep breath. No, you're wrong. I'm not a shinobi, I'm a god of judgment. Naruto yelled as a blackish red aura flowed around him. Naruto took a step, causing the ground to shake as the aura solidified into blades, meet judgment. Enko fell to her knees, choking over the amount of killer intent that Naruto was pouring out. She looked up, looking at Naruto's backside as he became encased in darkness. Naruto jumped into the air, staying afloat as the black blacks lifted with him, spinning in a circle around him. Arg Naruto yelled as he lashed out, the blades of darkness following. Nori dodged quick enough to escape the would have been painful attack, but crashed into the window behind him. The two stories fell as nothing for the ex Ambu as he landed on his feet. But the sight of the darkness covering Naruto flying out of the room gave him goosebumps. Water style, water gun, Nori yelled. Nori set off two shots of water, each targeting Naruto. Naruto brought his hands up to block as the blades rotated around him, dispersing the water attack. Nori jumped back bringing his hands together in a quick yet fast series of hand signs. Water style. Water dragon from the mess of water around them, a small dragon made up entirely of water rose into the air. Naruto landed on his feet, the blade falling beside him in a star shape. Anko stood at the broken window, watching Naruto and Nori fight, trembling at the amount of energy Naruto was giving off. That was not chakra, her hand reached to the mark on her shoulder, that's what he used. I let the first sacrifice be you, Nori said, as he pointed his ninjato at Naruto, fetch. The dragon kicked up, dashing towards Naruto, who stood glaring at the water beast. Nori looked surprised when the dragon fell to the ground, sending a wave of water everywhere. Had that was weak, Naruto mumbled as he lifted his right hand, the blade aligning them with it, judgmental pulse. The once blue orb of his was now cloud with black smoke, a red pulsing light emitting from it. Nori only had a few seconds to comprehend what Naruto said before being exploded backwards into a house. The explosion took out three square blocks of the ghetto, leaving Nori in a small crater. He struggled to get to his feet, gripping his sword hard as he stood. He was barely injured, let alone even hurt at all from the attack, but somehow, Nori felt as if his life was barely hanging on a thread. What the hell was that? Nori yelled as he took a step back. Digimental Pulse Naruto said as the shadow-like darkness uncovered his face, allowing Nori to see the bright yellow eyes and sadistic smirk on Naruto's face, an attack that forces you to the brink of death, setting you on the line of the living and the dead. Anko took a step close to the window so that she could hear more as Nori took another step back. Impossible. There is no way you can do that. Nori yelled, bringing his sword in front of him. Do you really think that piece of steel will do anything to me? You have to be shitting me. The darkness covered his face again as Naruto pulled one of the swords from the spinning circle around him, the judgmental blade. The shadow-like blade shifted to look like a guardless sword. Naruto took a step, breaking into a run as both him and Nori clashed blades. Sparks flew as Naruto pulled off, going for an up slash, Nori parried with it, lunging in. Naruto blocked with the flat side of his sword as he pulled another one from the spinning circle, slashing the top point of Nori's ninjato. Nori's eyes widened at the side of his blade, but while he was distracted, Naruto stabbed him. Nori looked down, seeing his opponent's blade through him. He looked up as Naruto placed his left hand on his shoulder, pushing him away, pulling the blade out. But how? Nori mumbled as he stumbled back over a manhole cover. Shut up and just die. Naruto mumbled. Nori let out a cough, blood shooting out, he dropped his ninjato on the ground as he pulled his hand together in the boar seal. The manhole shot up, sending him into the sky as the water beneath them shifted and moved up, forming a bed beneath him as he landed on it. Have better luck next time, rookie. Nori said as he fell into the hole. Naruto took a step to follow when Anko appeared in front of him, her hand out to stop him. I don't know what the hell you are doing right now or what the hell you did to him. Anko started, but with him injured like that, we can hunt him down a whole lot easier. Narchuo blinked, the darkness around him slowly dripping off as his blonde-haired head showed to her. The fine hunt? Naruto asked. Me, you, and maybe an Inuzuka and a few others will follow his trail. The sowers lead to the river outside the wall. I have already sent a team of Anbu there, so if he does come out, he's done for. Naruto let out a sigh as he dropped to his knees. Shit how the hell does she do that on a daily basis? Naruto growled as he grabbed his stomach, divine frenzy isn't what I thought I would be. He dropped dead on the ground, Anko kneeling beside him. Amgaki if that can drain you like this, I fear what can kill you. She pulled him over her shoulder and shunshin off to their house. 
unknown place. Naruto opened his eyes to see a white wall, ceiling, and floor. He jumped to his feet, looking around his hand steadily on the handle of his Kaiketsu Shoji. He made cautious movements, taking each step slowly, as he moved around the room he was in. Out of nowhere, a desk and chair appeared, followed by a dark-haired man sitting in the chair. He had on a black sleeveless high-collar jacket over a black muscle shirt, black cargo pants with white flames licking the bottom, and black combat boots. Naruto straightened up as the man looked up at him. You better have a good reason for bringing me here Kaido. Naruto asked as the man stood up. Of course I do Naruto, Kaido said, you broke Kami's first law. Bullshit. Naruto yelled. I'm not kidding. The gods are having a field day with you. Going into divine frenzy in a populated area, losing control over your divine chakra, and better yet, spilling an innocent's blood. Naruto took a step back in horror. No I couldn't have. Naruto dropped to his knees as he looked down, I killed someone. Someone who was innocent. Naruto went into the fetal position as his eyes began to water. Kaido let out a sigh as he made his way over to the crying blonde. He took a seat next to him, pulled a scroll from his pocket and held it in front of Naruto's face. Here, your third test hint. Kaido mumbled, you did show intelligence, knowing your enemy and planning out his scheme, but your cunning is something you're going to have to ask the fiery mate of yours about. Naruto looked up at the green border scroll, reaching out to grab it as Kaido stood. When did I take the test? Naruto asked. You will always be tested on Naruto, but when you pass the test is something I can't answer for you. Kami wants to see you when you wake up, she said to bring that partner with you. Naruto nodded as Kaido vanished in a cloud of smoke. Naruto stood up, breaking the seal on the scroll, and he unrolled it. Welcome to the third task test. You survived this long, but fear I shall see. Your next task test shall include me. This is your only hint, so good luck. I can fly like a bird, not in the sky, which can always swim and always dries. I say goodbye at night and in the morning, hi. I'm part of you. I follow and lead as you pass. Dress yourself in black, my darkness lasts. I flee the light, but without the sun, your view of me would be gone. What am I? I am not you or the thing I am under. I am dark, but only in the light. I am not visible in the darkness because I blend in. I am turned different ways at different times. I rotate around you and other things. What am I? Kami? Shit a riddle. Naruto groaned as he closed the scroll, Mom, you are such a kid at times. Naruto gave a snap, opening up a gate back to his mind. Naruto and Anko's shared apartment. Naruto stirred as he opened his eyes to see the so familiar brown eyes staring down at him. He let out a groan as he rolled to his side, sitting up on the bed, and looked over at her. Anko, you carried me back to the house. Naruto asked as Anko nodded. Hell yeah, I can't lose you. Anko said with a smirk, without you, I'll be back to being the council's lapdog and I'll have no one to tease Kurunai-chan with. Naruto let out a small chuckle as he stood up, he looked down to see his cloak missing along with his shirt. Anko did you try to rape me in my sleep? Anko blushed a little as turned her head away. No, your cloak was shredded when you went into that frenzy state of yours and the shirt was taken off by the medics. Anko answered, but that thought hasn't crossed my mind yet. She mumbled the last part to herself as Naruto pulled open his closet. Damn all my white cloak is either dirty or caked in blood. Naruto mumbled as he pulled out a black cloak, Kami is going to have a field day on this one. Why? Anko asked as she leaned against the closet door. Gods wear white, demons wear black, and acolytes wear gray. So where does that place you wear every color? Nowhere, I am neither a god nor a demon. Naruto answered as he opened up a gate, Kami wants to see me and you. You are to stay quiet and less spoken to and refrain from making my life harder with Kayu-chan and Kami. He grabbed hold of her hand and pulled her through. Kami's court, the double doors to Kami's court stood over three stories, the court itself overlooked the hundreds of planes that Kami controlled. Naruto let out a low whistle as he placed the palm of his hand against the cold marble-framed glass doors. He turned to face Anko, giving her a sheepish smile. Dust open the damn door Gaki. Anko ordered as Naruto channeled chakra into the door. The sound of gears and levers echoed as the door became transparent before vanishing. Naruto grasped her hand, pulling her into his step as he walked through the lone arch. Anko's first thought of Kamis Court was holy fucking shit as took a step back. Kamis Court was little more than a courtroom, it was a mess hall. Chairs towering high into the sky, a pool of bluish green water below them. Gods and demons alike moved around on the floor, as far as she could see, a hundred and sixty-nine people sat in the chairs. A floating wisp of blue fire, giving the room an eerie bluish-white glow. She looked over to Naruto, who had a stoic look on his face, as something landed in front of them. She turns to see purplish-black feet mere inches from her, as she travels up the leg to see the face of a dragon. He looked down at her, smoke blowing out its nostril, as Naruto took a step in front of her. Drop the intimidation act Bahamut. 
Naruto roared as the said dragon went up in smoke. Once the smoke cleared, standing in the dragon's place was a little hooded boy. Pes still has my skills, Crybaby. Bahamut said with a chuckle as he jumped up to his seat. A man in a white suit and waxy gray hair stepped in front of them. His eyes tired as he pulled out a clipboard. Do you have an appointment? He asked as Naruto let out a groan. No you lost soul, I'm here on business with my mother. Naruto answered. Oh your name? Uzumaki Naruto. The lost soul nods his head, turning to face the court. He cleared his throat, sticking the clipboard between his arm and torso. Uzumaki, Naruto stands before the court. He yelled as the gods shifted in their seats, the demons rolling their eyes. The wandering souls all vanished as the wisp of fire brightened, the court shall be cleared and empty of all wandering souls as Kami conducts her trail. He turned to Naruto, you may speak. Naruto nods as he lets go of Anko's hand and walks up to the pool of water, standing on its edge. Mother, Naruto said, looking at the tallest seat where Kami sat, everyone. He gave a short low bow as he motioned for Anko to walk over to him, this here is Midarashi, Anko. My partner in the elemental nations. Anko gave a bow as Kami stood up in her seat, causing Naruto to panic. My boy is strong, yet stupid. She mumbled retaking her seat, you know why you're here. The innocent soul that was split by my ignorance. Naruto answered, most of the gods were shocked as the demon looked closer at him, I know the punishment for such an act. Really now boy. Yelled a man a few seats from Kami, but just below hers itself. Naruto looked over at him, his fiery red hair blowing behind him, as he fired charred clothes begging to be released from his over-muscled body. Ifrit, yes, the punishment was made clear to me when I witnessed you lose your title years ago. Naruto spoke with venom to the fire god, his eyes glaring daggers. My mistake was made by your ignorance and petting judgment. Ifrit roared, but I served my time and reclaimed my title. I can see that, but you still wear those charred robes of your father's. Dressing as him won't make you him. Naruto shifted his hand back to his mother as Ifrit let out a roar, the fire in the room dancing wildly. Naruto-kun, that was a cold shot there. Said a soft voice that Naruto would never forget. He looked over to the pale blue colored ice goddess sitting only a few feet from Ifrit, I thought I taught you better than that. You did Shiva, Naruto mumbled, holding his head down as he advertised her gaze, my anger will only drive those away and soon take control of my abilities. See, Ifrit, does that look like a guy who can kill an innocent soul? Said a white-haired man, he can't even backtalk Shiva in his anger. Shut action, we all know that Shiva is the one person that anyone would not want to talk to back. Still, I say the boy's poor judgment is one thing that makes him more human than a god. Action said, looking over at Kami. Kami nodded her head in agreement as she looked over at Bahamut. So, Bahamut, since you kin decide to speak out of turn. What do you think Naruto's punishment should be? Bahamut let out a roar of laughter as looked over at Naruto and Anko. I say, we kill his mate and make him suffer the loss that someone has because of him. Anko had shivers go down her spine as Naruto took a protective stance in front of her. Try it Bahamut and my mother won't protect you from my wraith. Naruto yelled. You really think you can take me on? Boy. Bahamut yelled, his wings already out. I don't think so. That for sure. Ifrit mumbled. I know. And trust me, you don't want to fight me here. And why is that? A firestorm kicked up around Naruto as a scarlet-haired female stood against his back. Because you overgrown lizard, said the girl, she took a step away, giving everyone a view of her nine lashing fox tail, I, Kayubi no Kitsune, demoness, and leader of the Kitsunes will stand with him. And trust me, when I back someone, all of the demon clan will follow. Bahamut let out a snort as he sat back in his chair. He crossed his legs and placed his head in the palm of his hand. Let the boy keep his mate, but I still think he needs to suffer what the mother suffered. Kami took note of how quickly Kaiubi came to his rescue and how Naruto was eager to protect someone, even against a god. And I'm, I know you don't like to take sides, but what do you think? And I'm, a pale man wrapped in bandages stood up from his seat. He looked down at Naruto, who was still glaring at Bahamut. Let him off. Was all he said as he retook his seat. Why? Ifrit asked. Because the boy is so close to finishing his trails, let him have that. But place his title on restriction. What's a god of judgment if he can't even use it? Everyone in the room began to nod, some broke into discussion as Kami turned to her siblings. Fate, Kira. Fate was the first to respond as she stood from her seat. I second that motion. He's good enough without it, but let's place a limit on him. Monitor his actions. Fate said as she looked at Naruto, I've seen the stuff he can do in the future, and trust me, he will blossom into a killer if left unchecked, on restriction, he loses all control over it, thus losing the ability altogether. She's right. Kira mumbled, he needs his ability, but needs to be watched carefully. Kami let out a sigh as she stood from her seat. 
She placed her hands on her hips, looking down at the blonde hair boy she raised. The court will be in recess for 10. She mumbled as the lost soul began ushering people out. Naruto stood in the hall of the court, his head hung low as he repeatedly mumbled words. Anko was across from him, looking at her sad partner. So what's wrong? She asked, trying to cheer him up. Everything. Naruto mumbled, he looked up into her brown eyes with his sad bluish green ones, if I'm placed on restriction, I lose my ability. If I have the limit, I'm only allowed so much at a time, but I can control them. Then, there's the actual punishment, which I may just die for my sin. Oh, but wouldn't your mother protect you? No Kami has to do what she thinks is right. So if I have to die, she will. It hurts her to see me die, but she will bear with it. Naruto looked over to the doors to the court, Kaiubi stood guarding them. So you made it to the nine tail fox demon? Anko said with a smile, any other mates you have that I should know of. Kaiubi was the only one. Naruto answered, but it's not really a mate, it's more like an I die, you die thing. The doors to the court opened, out stepped the many demons in rage, as the lost soul stepped in front of him. You are needed. Naruto nodded, grabbed Anko's hand, and walked in. Naruto stood on the rim of the pool again, the room looked emptier without the demons, but the gods all had a calm, blank look on their faces, as Kami stood up from her seat. She held out a scroll that Naruto guessed had his sentence and punishment. She glided down to the floor and handed the scroll to the lost soul, who in hand broke the seal and unrolled it. He cleared his voice as Naruto closed his eyes, begging for a miracle. Uzumaki, Naruto, you tried with the following. Murder of an innocent, failure to repent, and loss of control of your abilities. The court finds you, not guilty of loss of control, not guilty of failure to repent, and, Uzumaki, Naruto, you tried with the following. Murder of an innocent, failure to repent, and loss of control of your abilities. The court finds you, not guilty of loss of control, not guilty of failure to repent, and murder of an innocent, the court finds you also innocent. The charges are therefore dropped from your file. The lost soul said, Naruto let out a sigh turning towards the court and gave a bow. Gods, goddess, I thank you for sparing my life in the court. Naruto said, as Kami stood from her seat. Of course. Now about your next test. Yes all you gave me was a riddle of a hint. No date or time. Naruto said, as fate came around next to her sister. The date and time for the test will be set a month from today. Allowing you time to solve the riddle and plan out what you think you are going to do. Fate said looking over at her sister, you think that the old man would be ready by then? Sure he is our father after all. He should be ready. Kami gave Naruto a smile, you may leave my son. Naruto gave another bow and turned to the door. He walked down the hallway over to another set of doors that lead to the lower courts. Anko followed quietly behind him, looking at the many lesser gods and demons walking around. She speeds up, grabbing Naruto's hand. Wait up Gaki, I have another question for you. Anko said with a smirk. And what would that be? Naruto answered. What did you do to piss off that god in there? Naruto came to a stop, his head held down, as he looked over at her. That's a story, I really don't like to talk about it. It's one of the most regrettable moments in my life. Your life, you're only 16. What can be so bad that you regret? Naruto turned to face her. His eyes were dark, the smiling expression on his face was gone. This wasn't the first time I killed someone in my rage. The first one was my well, my first girlfriend. His father told me to get away from her when he saw what I could do, I became Ferris with him, I wanted to make him pay, but then my judgment ability decided to kick in. Ifrit arrived in time to stop me from killing her little sister. He took the blame, stating that he wanted to test my skills and arrived at the wrong time, lighting the place on fire. Anko took a step back, her back against the wall, as she looked at him. But then you how damn. You really are a monster when angry. Anko said with a smile, now if we can get you mad enough during those boring council meetings, we might have a better village. Anko let out a laugh, as Naruto smiled a little. Yeah, but there would be a lot of blood and fires. Naruto turned and pushed open a door, come we have a lot more to do before we part back to the elemental country. He walked her in and took a seat on one of the white sofas, Anko sitting across from him. So now that you know my actual weakness and what happens if, and I repeat, if I ever was to lose myself again. You are now needed to watch me. Make sure I don't snap without reason and we still have to find Nori. Naruto said as Anko nodded. But, he can be anywhere. The Anbu lost him long before they arrived at the sower exit. Suna. What? Why? His best bet would be to go to Suna or Iwa. If he wants to overtake the Hokage, he will need a force to stand behind her with. Naruto pulled out a map as a knock landed on the door. The door flew open and walked two people, one was a tall anky man with shoulder length black hair, the other was a female with waist length braided white hair. Each had on the same outfit as Naruto. The female carried a sword on her back, the guy had two guns strapped to his side. 
They came to a stop in front of Naruto, the girl glaring daggers at him. Raizo? She mumbled as Naruto looked up at her. Then him Father Knight rose. Naruto said, as his hands inches to his blades, what brings my two equals to one place? That's still a cocky motherfucker, aren't you? The man said. And here I was thinking that you couldn't swear. Father Knight rose what would the Order think of such language? Little of it I'm afraid. The Order has no control over what I do, as of now. Father Knight rose walked over to the pool that sat behind Naruto. I was given a message from one of your contacts in the dimensional rift, from whom might I ask? Naruto asked, turning to face his comrade. From a man who lives in Ivalice. The Marquis? Yes. The father turned and pulled out a scroll, the message was sent with utmost importance. The messenger was killed after he handed it to me. Naruto walked over to the father, snatching the scroll from his hands. He took a seat on one of the benches, snapped the seal, and began reading the scroll. The death of LD. Raceler Hayo's Nebradia was but one of many tragedies to befall the kingdom of Dalmasca. The alt of hope that had surrounded HRM Princess Ash's wedding was now quite lost, Dalmasca had been set adrift at the mercy of history's restless tides. At this time, two great empires struggled for Dalmasca over Ivalice, Arcadia in the east. Rosaria the west. The invasion of the kingdom of Nidradia was Arcadia's first step in its westward march. But Lord Raceler's beloved homeland consumed by hellfires of war. It seemed clear that Arcadia would soon meet out like fate to Dalmasca. The fall of the fortress at Nalbina marked the destruction of the greater part of Dalmasca forces. The counter-attack was mounted by the Order of the Knights of Dalmasca, ever brave and faithful, but against the martial might of the Arcadian armies, they stood little chance of victory. Indeed, their defeat was to be absolute. Soon thereafter, Arcadia came forward offering terms of peace, or, as one might put it, terms of Dalmasca's surrender. Lord Raminas. The King of Dalmasca and my dear friend had no choice but to accept these terms. It was, thus, only with reluctance that he set out for Nalbina Fortress now under Arcadian occupation to affix his seal to the Emperor's Treaty of Peace. The king had scarcely departed his royal city of Rabanister when the remnants of the Odor made their return. And not a moment too soon, for a terrible revelation awaited them. The treaty would be signed with steel and writ in royal blood. Shit damns it. Naruto yelled as he stood up. He looked over at Fate and Kami who were standing by the door, then to Anko and Benimi. Finally his gaze landed on Father Knight Rose. I need to go. Was all he said, as made his way out of the room, Father, take Anko back to the Elemental Nations, tell the Hokage I might be MIA for a few weeks. A month tops. And where are you going? Kami said, as she appeared in front of her son. The Ivalice. I have a day, maybe two to catch up with the recon forces. Naruto walked past her, walking over to the armory. He slid the door open and began to look around. If the king signs that treaty, all hope in Ivalice will be lost. Without your godly abilities, you would be nothing but a mere man. Fate said as she walked in behind them. Fine. I'll invoke the right of Shinigami. I'll give up a month of my immortal life to use my abilities for a month. Fate stood in shock at what Naruto said. I'm fine. Fate waved her hand as Naruto let out a grunt of pain, this better be worth the month you gave up. Kami and Fate walked out as Naruto went over to his cabinet. Inside sat a sword and a shield. The shield was highly advanced for where he was going, but it would be needed. The sword was a simple short sword with a bluish tinted blade. He walked out of the room and strolled past the gods towards the dimensional rift site. He stood at the edge of the godly plain, looking for his target. Naruto walked slowly in the sewers of the Nalbina fortress, trailing the recon group that was ahead of him. The bluish sword of his was already stained with Imperial Guard's blood, the water tainted red. He came to a gate, the group standing around. He walked up a small set of stairs as everyone turned to see him. Each had their hands on their swords. Stand down, you lot. Said a raspy voice as Naruto turned his head. Captain Bash von Ransenberg. Naruto mumbled as he pulled his hood down. My lord Uzumaki. Bash said quickly, bowing. Stop it. You know I hate formalities. Naruto walked closer to him. An old friend once told me that they suck and are annoying. Yes well let's just say that she came quite used to them of late. Bash turned as a man walked up to them, a great sword strapped to his back, this here is Vassalar Azelis, captain in the king's army. And the bastard that ruined a perfectly good knight. Naruto mumbled as he glared at Vassalar. I said I was sorry. Sure you did. Naruto looked over at the people there, slowly counting a group of about 10 well-armed but equally tired soldiers. Any luck getting in? None at the moment, but I think there's another way. Bash said as he went back to a man that was laid out on the floor. Can you hear me? Bash asked as Vossler came up behind him. It's as I feared, they're slowing us down. Do not say that. Not all of us here have longed to battle. Some of us fight for our homeland. Vossler walked away as Naruto came up behind him, your name? Rexer? 
The man now named Rex said, my name's Rex, good. Rex. You bore a few cuts, but you are still whole. Can you stand? Bash held out his hand, helping Rex up. You think you can still fight? I'm fine sir. How old are you Rex? 17 sir. Young. Bash mumbled. Bullshit. Naruto yelled, he's older than me. Family. Only my brother Vaughn. Naruto let out a low whistle as he walked over to the edge. We found them. Over there. Archadian soldiers yelled as they ran down the hall towards them. Bash gets going. Naruto yelled, I'll handle this a lot. Bash nodded his head and moved out as Naruto pulled his sword out, the shield rotating as it grew bigger, the first Archadian guard ran up and clenched his sword against the shield. Naruto pushed him back, taking the left swing of his sword, cutting the guard across the chest. Two more ran up, Naruto banged his shield against one's head, lunging the sword into the other's chest. Bash could only watch in awe as Naruto took down the Archadian guards with little effort. So that's the proclamation of the Azure Blade of Busara. Bash mumbled as Naruto walked up beside him, such a sight it is. Yeah, too bad that I had to kill my brother for the right to claim it. Naruto walked over to Rex, giving him a glance, Rex, and you three, will stick with me, and Bash. Vossler, you will take the rest up ahead, we will take care of any stragglers. Yes sir. The group yelled as Vossler nodded his head. But Godspeed. He turned and ran off. Naruto turned to his small group and gave his orders. They moved swiftly and quickly. The small encounters with guards were all they faced on the way to the main fortress. Naruto stood, pulling his sword out of the guard's chest as he looked up into the sky. Captain? Rex asked as Bash came beside Naruto. Prepare yourselves. Naruto yelled, enemy air cutter. In the air was an Arcadian air cutter, he balanced in the glow of the moon before sweeping down towards them. Naruto pulled out his sword as the air cutter came to ground level, unleashing a wave of bullets. Naruto maneuvers through them, coming up underneath the vessel and delivering a great slash. The thing just wobbled before unleashing another wave. The cuts and slashes the group made were doing little damage, Naruto was down to his last bits of energy. He looked over at T-Bash and gave him a nod. Do it. He said falling to his knees, his sword holding him up. Bash walked past him, channeling his energy into a ball of blackish-bluish-green color. His quickening attack did the last bit of damage to the vessel as it took to the sky. Hurry and move into the fortress. Naruto yelled as more guards came out, I'll deal with them. Naruto went through some simple hand signs drawing in his breath before unleashing his attack, fire release. Great dragon fire technique. He let out his breath of fire, taking the shape of a dragon, it moved quickly, reducing the guard's ashes and a pile of steel. Bash yelled out as he looked around. He's long gone, Bash. Naruto said he has either fallen or taken a turn for the worse. Rex came up from behind them. Is his majesty unharmed? No, the Dumbus will agree to an unfit peace treaty and an unconditional siege, Naruto said with a smile. They wouldn't dare touch him until the wax on his seal is dry. But if we arrive after he signed the treaty, then Arcadia won't have to worry about a war with Rosaria. Naruto mumbled. He turned to Bash, I'll take the young one, go ahead and try to stop the signing. Bash nodded, running ahead, as Naruto gave Rex a look. Rex is there anything you would like your brother to know? In case you don't make it out here alive. Rex was taken by Naruto's statement but thought a little. Yeah if I want to know that I still love him and I hope to see him once more, maybe think about time with our parents. Why do you ask my lord? Naruto gave him a shy look before answering. Because, I have this gut feeling that somehow, one of us isn't going to make it. If not, then Arcadia will feel the full wraith of Bucerian Republic and we top both the Razorain and Archadian empires in manpower and naval fleets. Both walked slowly up the stairs to the top. Little resistance was faced. Rex ran a few feet ahead of Naruto, pushing the double doors that stood in his way open a little. Naruto came up behind him, peeking between the cracks to see inside. King's Raminas sat limp like in a throne. Naruto's enhanced sight got a closer look, seeing the blood slowly drip from his wrist. Rex ran in, strat into Bash. Captain? Rex said before feeling a sharp pain to his chest. He looked down, seeing a dagger sticking out of his chest, Captain. Rex stuttered as he fell to his knees. Very bad for Noah. Naruto said as he walked in slowly, and I assume Bash is being held up somehow. Who are you? The now named Noah asked, pointing the dagger at Naruto. My, you brother must have spoken of me. No. Oh well. Naruto reached to his side and pulled out a kunai. Sorry, but I have a message to give to someone. Naruto threw the kunai at Noah, who in response dodged. He turned to look for the kunai as Naruto came in front of him. His knee went straight into his stomach, making Noah kneel. Naruto jumped next to Rex, pulling him over his shoulder, Hes stay with my Rex. Naruto whispered. Rex looked up at him, his eyes slowly closing. My lord. Rex whispered as Naruto took off out of the room. 
Naruto came to the railing of the stars, used it as a springboard, and took to the sky, falling down over 30 flights of stairs. Holding Rex with his right arm, Naruto used the left arm to pull up the air, making some more resistance, as he came to a crashing land. A crater formed from where he stood. He let out a grunt, cursing at himself for such a dumb move. He looked up to see Noah standing, looking over the rail at him. Seize them. He barked. Ten guards came running from behind him down the stairs, as more came from each flight. Naruto just grinned, as reached into his coat pocket, pulling out an explosive tag kunai. He tossed up into the air, jumped back behind the doors, as they shut. He could only laugh, as a series of explosions went off right after another. You see, while Naruto was falling, he let out his entire arsenal of explosive notes, then sticking to the rails, walls, stairs, and even the ground. Naruto carried Rex all the way to the point in which they first met. Rex were getting heavier to carry, and the guards weren't making it easier. Naruto laid him against the wall, taking a break, and looking over at him. Hey kid. Naruto said, as Rex let out a grunt, I know you're hurt, and all, I know you want to see your brat dot. Leave me. Rex coughed, as he groaned in pain. Do you really want me to? Rex let out a cough, hacking up blood, as he turned to face Naruto. My lord. Tell my cough other that I served my county well in battle. Naruto just nodded, as Rex fought to stand, do you do any more of these explosive things? Naruto nodded, pulling out ten of them. Here, let me stick them on you. Naruto placed them carefully, I'll rig them to go off in ten minutes. Okay. I'll fight whoever comes after you. Rex said before coughing up more blood, get out of here. Naruto nodded his head. He took a step back, gave Rex a silent prayer before running into the sower water, leaving a trail of splashes behind him. Naruto was about a half mile from where he left Rex when he heard the explosion, making him trip as he came around to the exit. He stepped out into the blistering moonlight desert. He reached behind himself, pulling his hood up over his head as he made his way to a banister. It was a two-day journey, Naruto was tired, exhausted, and hungry. He came to the city's gates, exiting the Esterson upon its sight. There was a group of people standing at the gate, from where he stood he could only mumble a single word. Wives. He worked his way to the group, his head down until he was with them. He reached up, pulling his hood down looking at them before giving them the bad news. The resistance force sent to aid your king was killed. He said softly, you king and my dear friend were among the casualties there. I am sorry for all your losses. What Naruto didn't know was the small teenage blonde boy with his female friend, he was taken aback by the fact that his brother was killed. A single Dalmiskan guard came running up to the crowd. He walked over to Naruto and handed him a note before running off to his post. Naruto looked at the note before letting out a groan before walking to the royal city. Naruto stood outside a set of doors, leaning against a stained glass window. He had his head down, looking at the floor when the door opened. Out walked a blonde-haired female in a black satin dress. She gave Naruto a glare as he stood up. His movement was quick, the sound of the slap echoed through the hall as she glared at him. I have a feeling I deserved that somehow. Naruto said with a smile. She gave him another slap as she turned and walked away towards the window, Ashelia. Naruto mumbled, what did I do? You forgot. She said coldly. What? My? Wedding? Damn. It is. She turned and glared at him, you promised me that you would return in time to be there. What was so important that you could come? Naruto let out a sigh, looking out the window. I was busy with my family. She only nodded, your father didn't make it. I figured. Arcadia moved here. I know. Any plans? You? Me? Ashes walked next to him, grabbing his hand, resting her head on his shoulder, you are still my foxy prince. I'll go with you to Busara. You said it was a lovely time of the year. Naruto let out a sigh as she began to sob, I still would like to see that famous ocean garden you boasted about. Naruto just nodded as he pulled her close to him. She buried her face into his chest, unleashing the blockade of tears she had since he walked into the palace. It was going to be a long night for Naruto. The end. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.